Greetings and salutations and a big warm welcome back to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast. Now, I am recording a few interviews with people live on the show floor at the Adobe Summit in Las Vegas this week. And you cannot be speaking with people in person and bouncing a few ideas around. And the big theme here at this year's event is every company today is under pressure to do more with less. But ultimately, customers still expect every company they work with to be digital first. And on a positive note, there is also a lot of excitement about contextual, tailored and product possibilities and why it is a great time to be digital. And the big announcement yesterday at the Adobe Summit is a new generative AI product called Firefly, where users can create content on the fly. But it was quite revealing that Adobe is also tackling that copyright issue by recognising the training content that is provided to them from their contributors. So as Firefly goes into commercial state, they're going to be announcing more about why they're planning on sharing that success by making sure that contributors get compensated for their efforts. And I must admit, I did find myself wondering if generative AI was a topic that was planned for the Adobe Summit in November last year, because it does seem over the last few months, it's something that every brand and business is jumping on. But one of my biggest highlights today was bumping into Atlanta-based Rick Limpert, who has been voted one of the top sports tech writers in the US. He covers the intersection of sport and technology and has been doing so since 2007. And Rick has appeared on everything from Fox News, CB Sports, and has written for the likes of Sports Illustrated and Yahoo Sports. And he's also a best-selling author who appears weekly on iHeartRadio talking about sports and tech. And... We were having just such a great conversation that we decided to record a few words near the media room, which was very close to the show floor. So buckle up and hold on tight while I beam your ears all the way to Las Vegas, where you can be a fly on the wall listening to my conversation with Rick here at the Venetian Hotel. So a massive warm welcome to the show, Rick. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Good to see you, my new best friend. And uh, so I uh, I cover the world of sports and uh, sports technology and sports travel to somewhat. Uh, I'm based in Atlanta and for all 15 years, and uh, I've kind of been one of the top sports tech writers in the U.S. Uh, and that translates also into like, Gra TV as radio, and I had the Tech of Sports podcast for over eight years. Uh, it's just we're a really good niche for me. When I tell people I cover sports technology, they're always curious to what that involves, and it and it just keeps growing. On this show, every single day, I try and talk about areas that people don't associate with technology, and try and bring that to life with some real world examples. And I think when most people think about sport, they don't associate it with technology. But we've We'll talk about that in a moment, but the question I've got to ask is, what brought you to Adobe Summit? Because again, people won't think of sports and technology and Adobe in the same sentence. So what brought you here? So I've been coming here, this is I think my fifth or sixth time. And it was Adobe that reached out to me years ago, maybe like 20 to 15, with many sports presenters that year. And it was leading into the Olympics year and all sorts. And they saw value in inviting me out and, uh, and, and writing some pieces and and uh, recording some uh, interviews. And uh, so really the credit goes to Adobe for their really, yeah, forward thinking company and uh, they take care of their clients. And I was able to give, uh, you know, some of their sports clients some uh, some attention and exposure. Yeah. And you said um, you've been here since 2015. I think about 2016, 17 was my first. But there's always a lot of big sporting stars, isn't there, each year, especially NFL, NBA, etc. The sports celebrities or the sports stars are really some of the biggest celebrities in the world. If you look at the, some of the top Twitter accounts, the terms of followers, you know, many of them are sports athletes yeah. and, uh, and sports stars. So they see the value in that. And uh, I can hope you have some this year again, mostly that are more, it's more U.S. centric this year, I think, uh, which is fine. But uh, they're good interviews. The sports uh, athletes and celebrities have stories to tell, too. 
and uh, and Adobe likes bringing that out into uh, into the uh, the show and how it relates to what they're doing. And I'm curious, just to go off a tangent here, is this something that you've seen happen um, over the last few years? That when you've got a player, let's say in soccer, you have someone like Ronaldo or Messi, and they've got millions and millions of followers. Is that outside of what they're doing on the pitch? Is that a factor in purchasing that player for things like image rights, shirts, and all those things that go with it? As well, you know, off the field as well as on. Not only are sports fans engaged in what they do, but they also, uh, the people that like pop culture, really you're getting more than just that sports audience. You're getting millennials, you're getting young people, and you're getting uh, middle-aged people that are interested in addition to sports fans. So that's really the uh, sweet spot, is you want people, uh, guests, panelists, speakers that relate to a lot of people. And as I said at the very beginning of the podcast, uh, one of the things I try to do is get people thinking differently about things like sport and technology and the, the relationship between the two. I've got to ask, how did those two worlds collide for you? What, what's your origin story? My original story is I'm, oh, I'm a sports person, but I also love tech. So this is true. Blending of my two passions, sports, my tech, only have one niche, and it's been good for me. Yeah. And it keeps growing. When people say, you know, what does sports have to do with tech? The answer is really everything. Professional players, the league players use has been developed at the tent wise. Uh, the events, stadiums are high tech, and also the way we consume sports, whether it be streaming, the uh, high definition TV is. I can find a tech angle in sports. Yeah. When it comes to just about a, someone says, I got a wear pair of shoes that uh, you want to have the creator on your, on your show. Absolutely, because uh, guaranteed there's some tech that went into the research and development of that pair of shoes. It may just seem simple, but really it's not. Yeah, and if you look at soccer players or NFL players, they're going to be wearing a sensor of some color, which tracks everything. Golfers that uh, get strapped into those seats of sensors and analyze their swing, the, their muscles. I mean, it's just, it's never ending. You know, sports fans, fan is short for fanatic. Yeah. And sports fans are fanatics. They want to consume as much as they can about their favorite player. And uh, and that's really the goal of the point that we've reached now is trying to uh, is trying to quench that thirst for everything sports with fans. And the uh, way we're able to do that and personalize it. A few years ago on this podcast, I spoke with the people at Real Madrid and Manchester United and how they had a wonderful challenge of only being able to get 90,000 people into their stadiums on match day, but also trying to serve 500 million fans all around the world and how that was forcing them to digitally transform their business so that they could provide fan experiences on match day for people in every corner of the world. Is this something you're seeing as well? I think so. Not from the fan himself. The kids get started in sports, not just one sport. They get started as many sports here at a very young age and they kind of grow up. Sports. Sports becomes part of the family fabric. Sports becomes part of your education. People that come to the U.S., that I have not experienced that. So you are either amazed by that or you're taken back by how important sports are. And I'm one of them. I mean, I love, I love the thrill of competition. But again, role of competition is, is really what defines this country. And uh, as this is a tech podcast, can you tell me a little bit more about how you're seeing tech advancing in sports fan engagement, including arenas and stadiums? Because we were talking about the LA Raiders stadium, which we've both been to. Everything's tech, right? It used to be if a stadium had like free Wi-Fi, <laughs> greatest. Now not only free Wi-Fi, but uh, you know, your devices charge automatically. Being in stadiums, scoreboards, technology that goes into designing the seat period. Um, it's all about comfort. It's all about enjoying the sports. We call it the fan experience, and these teams have spent so like billion dollars lower to uh, make the fan experience in these stadiums sold yeah because the tickets for these sports events are not cheap yeah i mean uh you're you're it's almost like an investment you take a family of four to a sports event it's it gets expensive so you, they want to make sure they make that experience as, as nice as they can so you come back I mean, yeah and uh the stadium to the arena is really embraced at so the question I've got to ask is, what about that armchair sports fan listening? What tech trends do you see for, the, for that person sat at home? You know, we now in this country, a lot of houses, we have media rooms with, that are designed with these huge displays. Of, uh, the audio feels like sitting in the middle of the field. It's almost a better experience chair at home than it is going to the game, fighting the traffic, 
parking, paying for parking. Uh, long day there at the stadium. You're tired, paying the exorbitant prices for concession stands. That uh, but it's nice just to be at home, make, drinking your own drinks and uh, and having a huge uh, screen. Do you ever think things like uh, virtual reality and the metaverse? Could you see a, a a future where we have the headset strapped to heads and it's like you're sat in your favorite seat at the stadium? Do you think that could happen? Yeah, it's kind of nifty. It's kind of uh, there's some trends there for the masses. I don't see that coming. And it's the food too, right? Food is a big part of those, those sporting experiences. Like, and you can't eat that food and drink beer if you've got a headset strapped to your head, a helmet. <laughs> A little more difficult and uh, and more expensive as well. Yeah, and just to bring to life everything that we're talking about here, are there any use cases you can share that will just help people understand areas that technology is transforming sport that maybe they've not thought of? Uh, the teams are not amazing. Virtual reality, and the teams get the lineup. They play practice against the team they're going to be playing that weekend. But, uh, you know, they're, they're tight-lipped on a lot of things. Some teams are more... Yeah. But I'm lucky I get to... Some things I have to sign NDAs for uh, some things I don't look to it, and uh, it's fun. I mean, at this conference, it's all about data and offering personalized services, artificial intelligence. And I would imagine that if you've got the data on the, your opposing team, the, the, the team you're playing next week, if you've got the data on how those players move, their tactics, you put that all into the technology, and then you can play a virtual version of that team. But I think there's a tipping point. And, I, and for the amateur athlete, for the weekend athlete like we are, that data is available to us as well. If an app's on your phone and such, that definitely is can hurt you some can. Sometimes that's too much information. Mm-hmm. And it maybe will take away some of the enjoyment of the sport. So there's a uh, there's a give and take there. And one of the things that connected you and I was our passion for technology and sport. So I've got to ask you, what is it that excites you about tech, about sport, how they two will click? There's something new every day. Literally, yeah, I wake up in the morning. And I don't want me to see something new. Yeah, that did my head. Like Christmas morning, every morning. Yeah. Man, the products that come out. Uh, there's no industry where the guy, a single guy with a workshop in his garage, his, or his basement, or hit his house or flat, can develop a product that can make him millions and millions of dollars like oh, the sports. Yeah. Now I see a lot of jump as well, but I see a lot of, innovative products that just come out of somebody's idea in their brain and here we are we're recording this live at the uh, adobe summit in vegas what are you most looking forward to and uh, what are you going to be thinking about on the way home is there, is there anything like just ignited something in you while you're here this is my 88 trip wow 88 in vegas it's uh it's dana overload a lot of times i'm out here for cps I'm out here for other shows uh Sports gambling, sports gambling has really taken off in this country. And the data that's available to sports gamblers has never been more accurate and has never been uh, more informative than it is now. So I constantly amazed by in the world of sports gambling, sports wagering, uh, how much money is wager. But you always hear those good stories about winners. Um, the NCAA basketball, college basketball town's about been going on for over a week in this country. And there's more money bet in that of single of that, I think, than any other sports event in this country. And Vegas is going to have part of it here uh, the later this week. That'll be first time ever it's coming to Vegas. That'll be exciting. And the sports books in the Vegas casinos are doing record tapes because uh, the sports gambling is more accessible you know, to the masses. And uh, in this country, people love to have a little wager out their favorite team. Man, well, love chatting with you today. And, and as we were talking about football, well, not football, just technology and sport are passions that are clearly you're very passionate about. It really shines in you. And for people listening that want to explore this area more, maybe they want to check out your podcast, maybe even contact you directly. What's the best starting point for everything? People, you can Google me, uh, Rick Lefford, come, it'll uh, come up and a billion things will come up. Uh, my podcast for over eight years, if you like sports and you like technology and the tech of sports is what it's called. I do it here in Nashville 7 each week on iHeartRadio. That I always it's, it's available on iHeart radio stations all over the world. And uh, my uh, my D, the, uh, tech review site or news site is called wirelesswednesday.live. That's updated at least five times a week. I always new story that I think if it interests me, it'll interest lots of other people. So in addition to all the other things I do, uh, I run media centers and sports events. I cover events, uh, sports promotions. 
And uh, if you have any ideas that uh, that you want to uh, see, just uh, you can contact me at wirelesswednesday.by. Uh, I always love good suggestions for people, guests, and uh, um, and talking to people like you. You know that uh, share the passion. You uh, you love spreading the the word about tech. Hundred percent. I always say at the end of every episode, technology works best when it brings people together. So sports is the uh, to me is number one. Unify it. If you're into sports and another guy's into sports, you've got a friend for life. Well, exactly, because we, uh, we've we been coming to this event since, what, 2015, 2016. There was a period where we, we maybe doubted that we would never be able to do this again. Well, see, never, I never thought a sport stop yeah. at its tracks. And COVID, unfortunately, that, that happened. When they played the Premier League games, but with no crowd whatsoever. You were playing NBA basketball with no crowd. College basketball in big arenas with... You know, just uh, family and friends in there. You're officially my sports tech guy now, but <laughs> more than anything, thanks for joining me today. Please remember to check out Rick's daily reviews on wirelesswednesday.live and check out his Tech of Sports podcast. I do hope uh, Rick will stay in touch with me long after this event, and I'd love to have him on here more often as my roving sports tech reporter, keeping us up to speed with all things sport tech. But I do have a few more interviews lined up this week, so I'm going to dash away now to uh, line those guests up. But just a big thank you for listening today. I hope you'll join me again tomorrow. And until next time, don't be a stranger. 